was last, yeah, it was early last year. Yeah, so it was a long time, but um, so glad that you are here, and thank you for those that pray for me. Because <laughs> uh, you always want to be prayed for, you know, when someone's teaching and stuff because they go through so many things. But uh, just so grateful that you all join us for this class. And you know, this is Chesapeake Bay Bible College and Seminary. And the class you're taking is CM400, Disciple Making, Making Disciples Jesus' Way. Amen. So we're going to open up in prayer. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We thank you so very much for your love, for your goodness, your mercy, and your grace for us, Lord. Thank you for teaching us. Thank you for taking us through this journey of discipleship, Lord. We thank you for revealing to us your wisdom your knowledge, your understanding. And that we, you impart it to us so that we can help others, Lord God, to disciple them, Lord, and bring them into the fold of understanding your word as well. Bless you, Father. Praise you and thank you. As the word goes forth, Lord, help us to be able to understand everything that we hear. Thank you for... Uh, the participation, Father, for the students, Lord, and we just look to you for everything that we need, Father. We bless you and we praise you. We thank you and we love you. And we pray for all the people that will be coming, those that are online. We thank you for them, Lord, that they are watching wherever they are. And uh, I ask you, Father, that you pour yourself out in me that I may be all that you need for me to be. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So you have your, your uh, workbook. Um, I'm just going to go over a few things. It's actually a workbook. So what you're going to do is you're going to take it home, and you're going to do the work at home. Okay? Um, however long it takes you, uh, Oh, okay. Oh, <laughs> I could put it down here, actually. <laughs> That's right, Pastor. However long it takes for you to do it, you can do it quickly, however it is that you want to do it. But each, each week we'll go over a little bit of it, of what you've done the week before. Um, it begins on page... Uh, let's see. Actually, on page five, so we're going to go over all of that, a little bit of that this week. Um, but for you, you read that at home from page five all the way through to page 12. And at the end of page tw 12, uh, at the end, it says part one, a disciple's walk with God, life questions. That's starting your homework. And that's what you will begin to do at home. And if you notice page 13, it shares with you, you know, it gives you questions and you, you write your answers, okay? It's 14 for you? Okay. Oh, okay. But you get, you get, you get the idea. Okay. So that way, when you go home, you'll know what you're doing. And uh, it was probably just the way it was, you know, copied or whatever, that we're not on the same page. What do you have for 13? Show me what you have for 13. What does it say on the end? That's a... Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So then 13, uh, 14 begins part one for you? Okay. All right. 
Let me mark that down. Any questions? It's self-explanatory, basically. You do the home, you do the work. We'll go over some things, you know, um, the following weeks as we go along. All right, but read, read your, uh, you have your syllabus there. Okay, go through your syllabus, read it. It gives you an idea of uh, what you are to do. It says step one, read the workbook, which is included in this course material entitled Disciple Making, Making Disciples Jesus' Way. And this was written by Reverend Dr. Michael J. Oldham. Okay. Uh, don't worry about step two. I will give you that at the end. Step three, complete the workbook with another person. So you can choose to, you could do it at home, but you, can, you also have to find someone else to do it with. Okay. And step four, you write a paper on what you learn about discipleship and your journey of taking someone else through the workbook. <laughs> I didn't get to that part yet. I will let you know. You don't have to do it yet because you have so much homework. You want to go through your homework and, you know, and you're going to complete the workbook with another person. Okay? Mm hmm? Mm hmm? Yes, ma'am. This, this, course, this course has been done before. People have done it. You guys can do it. I have faith in you. If I got to do it, you got to do it. How about that? Okay. <laughs> no, this is really good for you, though. You know, it's good. It's teaching. It's training. And it's going to help us to be able to understand who we are as disciple makers and the apprentice, a disciple apprentice. You're training people. L let me do it this way. Can anyone tell me what a disciple is? Follow Christ, a student, a teacher. Anyone else? Hmm. A doer. A servant. What else? Anyone else? A follower. Yeah. So I'm going to read, I'm going to read, um, the, uh, define what is meant by the word disciple. A disciple is one who accepts and assists in spreading the doctrines of another. This is in Merriam-Webster's Dictionary. This is how they describe it. A disciple is one who accepts and assists in spreading the doctrines of another, such as in Christianity. A disciple is one of the twelve in the inner circle of Christ's followers according to the gospel accounts. He or she is convinced is a convinced adherent of a school or individual. That's Merriam-Webster's dictionary uh, definition. That's a good definition. However, there's a very simple Christ-focused def definition. A disciple of Christ is one who believes in Christ, trusts in Christ, and obeys Christ. And if we obey Christ, we would be disciple-makers. That's what a disciple is. Do you agree with that? Okay. So I'm just going to read a few things. Uh, turn to, I'm, I don't know what page this is for you guys. I'm just going to begin to read it. Page six, I believe for you. It says, when did you become a follower of Christ? Five for you. Okay, good. It's five for me as well. So we're about to embark on a journey, a journey in obedience to our Savior. Turn to Matthew chapter 28, 
And we're going to begin to read from verses 16. And this is the Great Commission. Let me know when you're there. You there? Everybody's there? Okay, good. Beginning at verse 16. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee to the mountain which Jesus had appointed for them. When they saw him, they worshipped him. But some doubted. These were the disciples. They knew what Jesus had told them before he he laid his life down, right? He said he was going to rise again. He told them what was going to happen. And he told them where to go. He said, go to Galilee in the mountain, and I will be there. So they did. And when they saw him, they worshipped him. But some doubted. So remember that part, but some doubted. 18, and Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So let's discuss that. It didn't say one. Some doubt it. Mm -hmm. That's right. We would think some of we would think that they were perfect, or some would think that they did no wrong because they were with Jesus, but they doubt it. They doubt it. The reason why I'm bringing that up is important, and we're going to see this as we go along. Okay, um, so we're going we're gonna to discuss that part of it now. Jesus gave us a commandment to make disciples of all nations. Does this passage of scripture also give us the authority to do so? Why? Uh-huh, and... There's more to it, right? Okay, good. Good, very good. Anyone else? Amen. It's his work. Amen. Anyone else? He gave us a commandment to make disciples of all nations. Does this passage of scripture also give us, give us the authority to do so? Yes, why? Think about it. Think about the scripture, he says. He says, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and, the, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the earth, or to the end of the age. Remember, Jesus sent the disciples forward to go into the highways and the byways. He sent them out. Does he do that today? He sends us out, yes. right? And what does he tells us to do? Make disciples, right? So if he gave us the, uh, he has all authority. He said, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on the earth. So now I'm sending you out. I'm sending you to go. I'm sending you to go to uh, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, 
teaching them to observe all the things that I have commanded you. So we know that who we are as children of God, he has given us the ability to take the word and make disciples. We become disciple makers. He's, he's given us the commandment to go and be able to do that. He's given us the authority to do that, right? So he's given us the ability to take his gospel and spread it. We can lead sinners to repentance. We have authority to do that. We can cast out devils. We have authority to do that. We can heal, teach. He's given us the authority as ambassadors, right? In the kingdom of God and as ambassadors, we act on who? We act on behalf of the one who is in charge. Who's in charge? Jesus Christ is in charge. So do you understand disciple? You understand what a disciple is? Do you understand who you are as a disciple? Okay, good. I'm glad you said that because we know a disciple follows a teacher, right? The evidence that he or she is a disciple is this. Are they doing what the teacher has instructed? So now we got to look in ourselves because we want to go and teach others, and then we're not doing it ourselves. Something's wrong with that picture. So now we have to look within ourselves first. And we need to ask ourselves a serious question Am I a disciple of Christ? Because it's easy to say, but when you really look at yourself, can you really say that I am truly a disciple of Christ? He said that we are. He gave us the authority to go out and do it. But what happened with the disciples? Some worshiped, some doubted. And they walked with him and talked with him and ate with him and sang with him, right? They saw the work. They saw him moving in empowerment. They saw him doing the things that, you know, that, that he did. And, and it amazed them. And they were all like, whoa. But when he wasn't physically there anymore, they doubted. It's not a condemnation for us. It's just for us to really look at ourselves. Because before we can move forward, we have to look within ourselves to see where we are you know, so that we can be effective disciple makers, right? We want to do this Jesus' way. He was effective. He was effective with his disciples. Even though they, some doubted, some, you know, might have, you know, didn't believe. You know, we could think about Thomas, you know. Jesus told them what was going to happen. He said it. And he st when he came and stood in front of him, he said, well, let me see your hand. Let, let me put my hand, my finger in that wound to make sure that it's you. Jesus said, come on, do it. And then he believed. Some of us believe what we see. I have heard that before. I only believe what I see. As disciple makers, we have to look within ourselves right? And we have to understand what makes us a, a, a disciple, an effective disciple. Well, one of the things is understanding that a successful Christian, right, walks in obedience. A successful Christian walks in obedience. The definition of obedience Anybody want to give me, can you give me an uh, answer to what obedience is to you? Huh? Doing what you're told to do. <laughs> Come on. That's right. Listening and doing it. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? 
Obedience. What is obedience? Yes. Okay. That's pretty much going to be what the answer is. Right. Right. Is that just any teacher? And that's what's important. We have to be able, when we're discipling, to be able to give that full understanding of what that means. Because if you say, just obey the teacher, well, then there's some false teachers out there. So you're just going to obey whatever they say because they the teacher? No, we're not going to do that, right? The obedience for the Christian is the act of submitting to the commands of who? God. He's perfect in all his ways, right? Yes. He sent, he's the highest authority. He sent Jesus to show us the way, and he sent the Holy Spirit to show us how to do this, how to do it, how to be effective, right? So we're going to read uh, Luke. No, before we go to Luke, we're going to read, turn to John, the book of John, chapter 14, verse 12. Christ told us that we are to do as he did. John 14, 12. Anyone would like to read that? Most assuredly, I say to you. Let, wait for everyone to get there. <laughs> oh. And then we, it's on the paper. It's on the paper, okay. or you can open your, yes, mm -hmm. or you can open your Bibles, whichever you feel comfortable. Okay, my sister. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father. Right, so what was the key word in that? in that scripture. Who believes in me. He who believes in me. Right? He who believes in me, the works that I do, you will do. But you gotta believe. That, right. You gotta believe that you can do it. But you have to believe that I'm, I can do it. Then you gotta believe that you can do it. And then you have to believe that I can do this through you. This is what he was saying. And then he said, once you believe, greater works shall you do. What are those greater works? Heal the sick. Huh? Heal the sick. Raise the Heal dead. the sick. Cast raise out the demons. dead. Cast, cast out demons. Preach the lepers. Make disciples. Preach the lepers. Preach the gospel. He did all of those things. He showed us. Because it's going to be greater because he's going to send the Holy Spirit. Once he goes to the yes. Father, he's going to send the Holy Spirit. And the yes. Holy Spirit is going to teach us yes. and guide us and lead us yes. into all the truths that he said, right? So he's going to show us how to do it. We weren't physically there with him when he taught the disciples. So the greater works, we're doing. Right. The disciples did it when he, was, when he went to be with when he went back home to be with the Father, then they began when the Holy Spirit came and they were infilled with the Holy Spirit, what did happen? They moved in power, right? They were bold for the gospel. Before that, they were like standing behind. They was like, oh, we don't know what to do. And, you know, we're fearful, right? Because they didn't know what to do. But when the Holy Spirit came, what happened? They were able to go out and begin to preach the gospel. They had a boldness. Yeah. They had a courageousness yes. to stand and in the midst of people who didn't believe. Right. And people got saved. And people got saved. saved. But they had to do something with what they had. They had to believe. They had to believe. We have to believe. Is that me? No, it's not you. It's something else. Okay. okay. We have to believe that what God says we can do, we can do it. 
If you don't believe that you can do it, you're not going to be effective. Even if you go out and try to do it, you're not going to be effective. Right? There are many who aren't saved that read the Bible and say, oh, I know what it says. But they don't have the Holy Spirit, and they're not moving in power. Anybody, they can read it, but will they be effective and yes. understanding without the Spirit of God? No. But you are. You are disciples of Jesus Christ because you believe his word. You believe what he's doing in the earth, in, the, in mankind. You believe, you see, you, you've seen him move, you've seen the miracles that he uh, is, is, is able to do in others. You see the work. You believe it, right? You believe it. Yes. Amen. So he said, the works that I do, you will do also. And greater work shall you do because he's going to the Father. And when he goes to the Father, he's sending the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, right? The Apostle John, this is the disciple that Jesus loved, wrote that we are to walk as Jesus walked. 1 John 2 6. This is where we're going to show that's what he says. 1 John 2, 6. I'm going to start, we're going to start at verse 5. I think that works, works with this. Let me know when you're there. Hi, Pastor. <laughs> You there? Yes. Yeah, first John two. We'll start at first five and we'll do five and six. Who would like to read that? But whoever keeps his word, truly the love of God is perfected in him. By this we know that we are in him. He who says he abides in him ought himself also to walk, just as he walks. There we go. Right? Yes. So wh what does that tell you there? The apostle, that was the apostle John, he wrote that we are able to walk as Jesus walked. Well, what does this scripture speak to you? Specifically verse six. He, he who, who says, says he abides, abides in him ought himself <laughs> just like he walked. So if we're saying it, mm. we need to be doing it. Right? Yeah. That's what we were just discussing. We have to be able to, to be, in order to be effective disciple makers, we have first have to be an effective disciple. So that's the submission. Huh? That's the submission. The, the obedience and the submission to God. Yes. You know, he's our teacher. He's our guide. He's our, he's our everything. He's our creator. He's our life giver. Right? We are to be in obedience to his will. Do we do everything God tells us to do? We should, but we don't. None of us. Not one. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. So... The scripture is profound because it, it, it reveals to us again that a disciple is to f follow the teacher. If God is our teacher and we are to follow him and we are to be obedient, these key words are important. So if you need to take notes, so that way you can, you know, when you're doing your homework at home or whatever you need to do, take your notes or you can always go back, you know, and look at the video as well. Um, but the key words is very, very important for us to understand that, all right? Um, to understand what is a disciple, what do we do, how do we act, you know? The, these things are very, very important for us as believers in Jesus Christ. 
We need to know what a disciple looks like. Can anybody give me an example of what a disciple looks like? Jesus. We look like Jesus, but what does that look like to you? Like, as, as a disciple of Jesus Christ, what do you, when you look at yourself and you know who you are, what does that look like? Or if you see it in others, what does that look like to you? I can't hear you. Say it again. Truth, light, love. that as a part of yourself no, but okay <laughs> but you're working so that is there's no wrong answer there's no wrong answer because we're all are walking and trying to get to that place yes. Yes. where Jesus is right mm -hmm. so there's no wrong answer so don't feel like oh I'm gonna say something crazy mm -hmm. don't don't feel that way we're here to learn from him and understand what it means to be a disciple so, yeah. Yes, could you talk in the mic so that they can hear? Because we're online as well, and they need to be able to hear you. Thank you. I know I'm a late comer, but um, one of the things that, um, that I come to realize after many years of being in the Lord is that knowing the word doesn't necessarily mean you live out that word. Mm -hmm. And so just because you know the word doesn't mean Right. Um, there were many Pharisees who knew the word very mm -hmm. well, and they surely were not disciples. Um, that um, we see that the true disciples were looked at as unlearned men. That's mm -hmm. in the scripture. Mm -hmm. And what happens is people mistake uh, knowledge, they mistake, um, uh, you know, gift of being maybe very smart. Some people are very uh, have a photogenic uh, uh, memory. memory and they remember everything and they can recite it but a disciple I believe has to apply mm -hmm. the thing that they say they know and it's not the easiest thing to do which is why not everybody is a disciple right it's not easy to do but can we ever get there Yes. If you apply yes. the word and you 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 were saying I'm gonna apply this word and I'm gonna live it out, yes. right? And then you become a disciple, like Pastor said. Intentional. That's good. That's a good word. Intentional. Being intentional with God's word and ap and, and being uh, allowing it to be applicable in your life. And that's why I was sharing earlier. We have to be, you know, what we thinking a disciple is, we need to be that first. We can't say, oh, that person, you know, is, a, it, uh, is not a disciple if we're looking at ourselves thinking that we're perfect. <laughs> you know? So it's so important for us to do that. The first one, the first part of it is the obedience to God, being obedient to his word, spending time in his word, learning who he is, spending time talking to the Father. Yes hearing his voice yes. pastor said on sunday that you know uh, uh, the scripture about um the shepherd hearing the sh of shepherd's voice knowing the shepherd's voice and the voice of a stranger we won't follow right because just as much as the lord is speaking to us satan is right there trying to speak to us too yes and he's constantly throwing these things at us right so who are we going to listen to if we don't know the voice of the Father, we're gonna follow that other voice thinking that it's our own thought, yes. right? Satan throws these things out at us and to make us think that it's our own thought. But it's not, 
He's a slickster, right? He's a sl slime. <laughs> He's always trying to enter in to change our thoughts away from who? Away from Christ. Away from the word of God. Away from the, the truth of God's word. Away from the safety of who God is in us, right? So he's trying to always draw us away from that. When we are listening and following our teacher, right, the Holy Spirit, we will be able to move ahead and say, okay, I can go to the next step. And, and it's all, we're always thinking to be effective. We want to be effective follow, uh, disciples, right? And so it's important for us to understand what that means. A disciple is also one who accepts and assists in spreading the doctrines of another, right? We read that. Um, the Great Commission is sufficient to state our mission, however, to fully understand the mandate to make disciples, it is helpful to check what is stated in the four other Great Commission statements. Matthew 28 was just the one. There are three others. And so we're going to go over that right now, right? Plus the book of Acts. So it's found in the three other Gospels plus the book of Acts. So Matthew 28 gives us the method of making disciples, tells us to go, tells us to baptize, tells us to teach, tells us to obey, right? So this can simply be translated as you go, do what Jesus did. We talked about that, right? Okay. Become a friend of sinners and share the good news. And when they repent and believe, baptize them, right? As an expression of their identifying with the work and cause of Christ, right? Then we teach them to obey all that he has commanded you to do. What Christ commands us to do, then we are able to teach them to do the same. Amen? Amen. So Luke 19, uh, Jesus told us in Luke 19 that he came to seek and save that which was lost. That should be a, a heart. Our heart should be to seek those that don't know Christ and to lead them to Christ because they're lost. They need salvation. Amen? Expound on it. You can move it closer to you. Huh? Mm -hmm. to, to, it, it's not just about being a woman and having one coach. You have to go after right. to go in afterwards. It is a going afterwards. It, it never said that they're going to come to you. Right. Um, I think one of the reasons why it says to go in Matthew 28 is because you have to get outside of yourself and go and share with them. Right. As opposed to just depending on where people are coming from. Absolutely. Something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, okay, that's really great. <laughs> um, but when you look at seek, mm -hmm. right, that's a different story. It's it not is. you being still just, uh, you know, letting people see that you mm -hmm. have a Bible and that you read it. It has a lot to do with uh, asking the Holy Spirit who you have to go after. That's right. And also that word intentional that you use, being intentional. Saying, I'm going to, this is, I'm being intentional and going to seek those that don't know Christ and being intentional about that. Okay. What was that scripture? Uh, which one? Luke 19. Luke 19. Mm -hmm. uh, it was Luke 19. Sorry. Oh. I'll pull it up for you.
uh, 10, Luke 19, 10. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. You're welcome. John gives us the model of disciple making. John 20, 21. John 20, 21. So Jesus said to them again, peace to you, as the Father has sent me, I also send you. Right? So he's teaching us to learn how to live out Matthew 28. We need to go back and master Christ's life. Jesus showed us how to create a movement of multiplying disciples. He gave us the, he, he showed us what to do. When we read the Gospels, we see what he, how he taught the disciples, right? And we're going to see in another scripture, too, what he did with the disciples and how uh, even in the scripture where he said, um, where, where they asked him um, about, about it, it, I'll, we'll get to it, but he said, I, to you, I give you the understanding. To the world. I give them parables because they don't know, right? So I'm paraphrasing, but we're going to get to that scripture. But, but as we have the model of disciple making, um, as the Father has sent me, I send you. So this is what Jesus says. He sent me, I'm sending you out. So he's saying you have the ability, you have the authority, you're able to do it, okay? So he's showing us how to do it when we read the Gospels. Uh, Mark, in Mark, it demonstrates the magnitude of our disciple-making priority. It says, go into all the world and preach the Gospel to all creation. Mark 16, 15. Mark 16, 15. Someone would like to read that? They didn't read before. And he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Yes. He said, go into all the world and preach the gospel, the gospel to, to all creation, creation, right? The mission begins where we live. It begins with our families. It begins with our neighbors our communities, right, our, our co-workers, and it extends out. So he didn't say you're going to take all of them teaching you and keep it to yourself. You're not going to stay home and just keep it to yourself. Everything that we learn is for us to take out, right? So we're disciples, but we're being trained as disciple makers. Hmm? Yes. Yes. That's right. You know, our pastors are disciple makers, right? They disciple us so that we can grow, so that we can go and make disciples, right? And it's not just for us to go and make disciples and say, ooh, I did that. No, we're, we're helping them to also become disciple makers so that they can go and make disciples and then train them up to be disciple makers. And it just keeps going on and on and on. So our mindset has to change, okay? Our mindset has to change 
because Jesus is coming back and he's coming quickly. And he doesn't want anyone to perish. He wants all to come to repentance. So he uses us to be able to go out, to be able to help them. They need to come to Christ. When they do, they need to be taught, how do I do this Christ thing? How do I do this being a Christian? So we are there to say, okay, come alongside. I'm going to show you. I'm going to help you. We're going to do this together. Amen? And this is what we're doing. We're uh, uh, in John, it gave us the model of disciple making. In Mark, it demonstrates the magnitude of that disciple making, right? Because that's a mission where we live. Our neighbors, our families, those are the ones that we generally are going to be talking to the most about Christ, right? They're the closest people to us, right? So we're going to go out. And, and in Luke... And this gospel account presents which clarity his disciple, uh, with clarity the dis his disciples' message. Repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. That's Luke 24, 47. Turn to it. Luke 24, 47. You know when you're there. Okay. And that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. So any message that is devoid of repentance and the forgiveness of sins is presenting a faulty gospel. Because as disciples, we are to preach repentance and remission of sins. Not our opinions, not our emotions of what we think it's what we think it's supposed to be. He says, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name to all nations. But we have to believe. We have to believe that what God's word says is the truth. That's it. That settles it for me. We can't uh, be, preach uh, repentance and remission, uh, remission of sins and not believe that it's true. There's so many people doing that. They're just taking this word and just preaching it and they don't fully believe it. They bring their own opinions in it. They bring what they feel that is right. I know someone right now who actually does this every week to a congregation, but yet want to throw in what they believe to that congregation as if that's the gospel. No, it's not. Because they're not, rep they're not teaching repentance. They're not teaching the remission of sins. They're teaching their idea of what they think the Bible teaches. But with, when you're void of the Holy Spirit, this is the kind of thing that happens. People are being taught, and they're not being taught to go find out for yourself. It's what I say that's gospel. And they're believing it. Yes, um, Amelia. Going back to it, this, when you said Jesus showed us how to create a movement of multiplying disciples, I keep hearing this movement, this movement. Well, this, and then the movement is dealing with repentance for the forgiveness of sin. Yes. That's what we're supposed to be preaching in this movement, and we're supposed to be doing that. But the movement that I see is not the forgiveness of sins. I mean, the movement that's being shown to the world is God hates. God hates, mm -hmm. you know, and it's like if they could move that to God forgives, mm -hmm. you know, that would be a true movement. But who's doing the movement? The Christians, the supposedly Christians, when the, on the matters of abortions, on the matter of same sex, you know, they're, talk, they're damning people and putting them in hell with all of these signs. Because they believe in a lie. They believe in a lie. But, no, but this is the movement for the, the people that are saying, you know, hey, we're chanting together, abortion is wrong, abortion is wrong, you're going to hell. That's the movement that we have here. So, so you're talking about people who are so active in declaring what they believe the word of God is for the world. Is that what you're saying? 
Repeat that again. That's being spoken. Because Satan is, is making sure that people are not understanding who they are, what what the word says. This is why I had I went to it in the beginning about where where when Jesus uh, showed up, it, that was in Matthew, and he said some worship and some didn't believe. They doubted. Right? So here we are living in this age. And we're seeing and hearing all sorts of things, right? People saying, I'm a Christian, but yet I believe in this. People say, I'm a Christian, but yet I believe in that. And we know that's not full gospel. We know that's not the truth of God's word, right? right. But we are being raised up. And as we learn, we take that truth out. Because the truth is going to prevail no matter what Satan tries to do. And we have to believe that. You want to say something, Pastor? Yeah, I said most people. Yes. And even though it's a righteous cause, it's not the gospel. It's not right. the gospel. Amen. 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 And so we as disciples are able, just like they did, they sat under Jesus and they, they, he, he taught them, he showed them, and then he sent them out. They wasn't just taking it all in and not doing anything with it. He showed them, I need you to be able to hear what I'm saying, take it in, and then begin to go out. So he sent them out, right? He began to send them out. He said, go and lay hands on the sick, and right? And they were able to come in like, man, we were able to do it. You know, they, they got excited because they, were, they, they saw that they were able to do it, right? And then what happened? They, they, they went out one time, and they was like, well, how come we weren't able to cast out? you know, these demons, you know? I mean, there was a point, what happened in that time? Who knows what was said to them? Who knows what they took in, right? That made them have some doubt. Because apparently they had doubt that Jesus already laid down his life and then he rose again. And they didn't believe it. They didn't, not all of them believed. We read that, right? It says, Right. Yes. We're going to go back and read it again. And at this in uh, 28, 16, uh, 17, uh, 16, 17, then the 11 disciples went away into Gal Galilee to the mountain which Jesus had appointed for them. He had already told them, I need you to be here, you know, for this time because I'm going to meet you there. Right. And he said, and then it says, when they saw him, they worshiped him. But some doubted. These are people that have been with Jesus. But we do, and yet there's yes. some of us that still doubt. We still go through that process of not believing everything that he says. That's why I was questioning you guys originally. How do you see yourself? Where are you? Right, because w when I asked the question, right, can you see yourself doing everything that God asks you to do? All of us said no. We don't, we don't do everything that God asks us to do. And yet the Holy Spirit lives in us. So even though they had, they did, he wasn't, you know, the Holy Spirit didn't, the, Jesus didn't live in them at, you know, then. We do. We have the Holy Spirit living in us. We have Jesus living in us. But is there, can I, I mean. Yeah, no, ask the question. 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 That's why we're here. But is there not, I mean, we're all, anyone who receives Jesus Christ has the Spirit of God mm -hmm. in them, or mm -hmm. at least none of them. But is there not? An anointing for, with power from the Holy Ghost.
those baptisms that allows you to to fulfill I mean you, it's a continual filling and isn't there an anointing for certain ministries and for certain like some preach with an anointing Paul said I did not preach with with words of a man I preach with power right um, so but that's this, that was a little different because we're talking about doubting we're talking about you know not believing God at his word completely you know that's a little different with what you're what you're saying because so for them right. he sent them out they were able to heal the sick okay, I hear right what you're and they weren't in filled it at okay, that time so you. when God sends a person he can send them to do whatever it is okay, when they're obedient to hear his word, right? They're going to be able to do exactly what, right? Yes. What he's asked of them. So obedience is the key. Mm -hmm. Obedience is key. Obedience to God's word, God's word. How do we know that he's speaking to us? How do we know that it's the voice of God? Through his word. Through his word, through spending time with him, getting to know his voice, right? The voice of a stranger, he said, we will not follow. Because a stranger is constantly speaking, apparently, if he said that, right? So we have to be in a place where we understand that, you know, there's a time that there can be where we're not, we're hearing God tell us to do a certain thing, but we kind of miss it a little bit. So we're going to take one more and then we're going to take a break, okay? How do we consider the saints of old? They did not have this, this amazing book that we have. Mm -hmm. what, they didn't have the, the scriptures in front of them, so how were they saved? By relationship with God. They believed, they believed that what God said in his word, God. even though they didn't have this. But, but it's a supernatural power. We, the life that we have inherited, is it not supernatural power? Isn't it a, a, another life Let born again? No, go ahead. We are not saved because we read the word. The word tells us how great the Father is, tells us who the Father right. is, tells us about the Father. Um, the reason we're saved is because we believe God. Right. It says, Jesus said to us, if you do not believe that I am who I say I am, then you're all lost. And it's a belief thing for salvation. Uh, for discipleship, it takes the Holy Spirit to live right. your life. Mm -hmm. Right. Pastor? I was just saying that um, if it is just the anointing that comes from the Holy Spirit, then we have no excuse whatsoever. Mm. Mm. Discipleship is called, all of us are called to be disciples without exception. Every believer. Mm -hmm. Not those just not those who preach only. That's right. All are called. All of us. Right. So it's a mindset change that has to happen. Mm -hmm. That has changed our, that has caused our focus not to be disciples, but to be as listeners. Mm -hmm. We're not called to be listeners. Right. We're called to be disciples. We're called to be disciples. And to make disciples. Amen. All of us are called to that. So we have to get out of this, this Western.
Western culture, the mm. Western mindset mm. that says, you know, there are few that will do those things. No, right. Jesus is telling us that we all are That's right. to do these things. That's right. right. Because you're my disciple. If you're my disciple. That's you right. Know. You you get you understand that? You you me? Yes. You get it? You know, what what they shared? You yeah, understand I'm, I'm, that? I'm, okay. I'm, I'm getting it. I'm getting okay. it. It's, it's still, it's still, it, lest you deny yourself, you can't even think about being a disciple of mine. Not that you're not saved, but you can't be a disciple of mine, Jesus Jesus said, said, unless you deny yourself, pick up your cross, and follow me. But so, so right. Yeah, so what you were saying is that uh, I just, I wonder when you said, look at yourself. I wonder when I look at myself, have I denied myself? Can I, do I shrink from the cross of picking it up? Am I still living comfortable? Going to church and still living comfortable, refusing to pick up the cross and still wanting to be a disciple. Mm. I don't believe, I, I think I'm still being comfortable. And I that's think, for many people. Uh, many uh, people so go through that, so this is why there is a mind, there's a change right. of thinking. Right. Remember when I said that? It's a change of thing. We have to change from what we think was right and now begin to put, God, what do you say? Right. How do I live my life based on who you are right. and what you say I am to be? That's right. Me right. Come on. Because of right. them. Yes. Right. So this making disciples, let's put it this way. Making disciples is making believe, making making disciples is making people believe that Jesus is the Son of God, that Jesus is who he said he was, right. that he came, he that he was sinless, that whole gospel. And when people believe that, that narrative, that's it. That truth, then they want to follow Jesus. So making disciples is Right. Which is study the word, which is mm -hmm. pray, which is gather together. The things that they say we should do. I want to separate that from the other thing. What is really making a disciple? Well, sometimes making a disciple is living among people and just teaching them and modeling stuff to them. It has nothing to do with reading the scripture. Jesus, I, I did not hear Jesus do a lot of Torah uh, teaching to the disciples. And he knew the Torah well. Caesar was Caesar. So from that perspective, I I file my taxes and I pay whatever I have to pay, even if it costs me whatever it has to cost me, because I don't want to lie or, or right. cheat or because because I follow Jesus. I'm mm -hmm. a disciple. So you're saying I don't know if I'm not 
there. So the questions we have to ask ourselves, and not where I mean by word every week, the questions I have to ask, we should do that. But the questions we have to ask ourselves is, when I make decisions every day, mm. what do those decisions look and sound like? Mm -hmm. Is it something that I would see my Lord and Savior doing, or is it something that doesn't glorify and honor God? Mm. This is, uh, disciple making is a way of living. You see, communal living in the Old Testament was about all of uh, the, the, the people coming together. It was very difficult when you didn't agree with someone in what they believe, and you would be an outcast, right? So in Christian then, the idea of being a disciple is being like-minded in the things of God and how you're living. Most of Paul's epistles are epistles of instruction on how to live in Christ's life. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm grateful that I have them. Because of that, I can make decisions that honor God. So it's, there's a balance. I'm not saying that one is better than the other. I'm saying when we're talking about teaching the course and, and going through this, we want to have that balance of mm -hmm. how is it that we can manifest God's glory, right? By following his word, mm -hmm. by being obedient, by asking ourselves, very, as we go through this book here, mm -hmm. there's a lot of questions. Asking ourselves a lot of questions mm -hmm. about why our motive, why do we do things? Right. It, I still, I I'm still right. not clear if you understand what I'm saying. I'm not saying that reading the word and all that, I know that, that you don't, that it's not the intellect. When you're discipling somebody, should they not know that when they have received Christ, they're receiving the Holy Spirit. They're receiving a spirit, they are dying to self. And it, it's gonna cost them their life. Okay, the, so in the beginning, I asked, yeah. can you see yourself doing that? Yes. Are you doing that? Yes, through the Holy Spirit. It's okay. a supernatural. It's not through me just reading the right. word. Right. It's not, it's not just right. listening to a sermon. Mm -hmm. It is the supernatural power of the Holy Ghost, Jesus Christ, in me that each day causes me to live more and become more into his image. Right, and so that's you're what acting I, right. out what it is that he's teaching, teaching. you. Yes. And in in order for us to teach others, we need to first make sure that we are right. in that place. Right. right? So that's what I was sharing. Yeah. So is that the same? That's what yes. you would understand. Exactly. Okay, good. That, it's, that it's not you. Oh, no, it's, it's not the us. Holy Ghost. It's, 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 Absolutely. Right. That's what I. It, it, it is the Holy Ghost, but Jackie said something. The teacher said something very interesting, and she read it on page six. It is obedience. Yes. More so than the Holy Spirit moving, it still requires obedience. Oh, requires the Holy obedience. Spirit will speak to us. He yes. will reveal the Word of God, yes. but we still have to be the obedient. obedient. Right. And this is the problem that we have. Yep. No one wants to, to be, be obedient. obedient. We want to read. We want, we want to do to our pray. own thing. We want to jump around. We want yep. to speak in tongues. Yep. But we don't, don't want to be, be obedient. obedient. Come on, Pastor. Yes. Yes. Yep. Yes. We have to. We ha it's an act. Obedience is an act of submission. Yes. Right. We have to submit ourselves to Christ. Yes. Not to Christ. Not to teacher. To Christ. And in turn, he's able to move on you so that you can go and be able to disciple others. Amen. We're going to take a break. We're going to take a five minute break. All right. And uh, get some water, go to the bathroom, <laughs> stuff like that. All right. Good. Good. I'm glad this is, this is class. This is why we have it. So we can ask questions and right. So good stuff. Concern is the younger generation wants to know what is so different about what you offer and, and, and what.
but we believe in. You know what they do? They want to see. They want to see your blessing. They want to see that you are obedient. They want to see that everything is just that you're actually living on. Because their generation of I see and I believe. That's what they're the generation of. And so these young people see you say one thing and then you're over here and you're carrying on your heart is just like all the time. Carrying on. And they see that, they're not going to move. Miss Jackie. Miss Jackie, there are people in the New Age religion that are stellar. They outdo any Christian I have ever seen. But 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 in the and they're not in, in the flesh. So you can look. I'm just going to listen. The thing that even though I understand what you're about to say. Yeah. Their word came to them like iron tails, and they did not believe them. They went to them and told them, We saw Jesus. And he healed him. He fell in the tomb. He rose again, and they didn't believe it. They thought that it was idle talk. A lot of times, that's what they But Peter rose up and ran to him. He ran, right? And he saw the living clothes lying there by himself.
Are we back? All right. <laughs> it was just, it was something extra that I was reading last night, so when you asked that question, oh. I needed, it was like perfect timing. <laughs> right, so. Okay, so we're going to go back. So we, we read in John's uh, a gospel about the model of disciple making. We read in Mark about uh, the magnitude of our disciple making. And Luke uh, 24, 47 present with clarity the disciples' message of repentance for the forgiveness of sins uh, will be preached in his name to all nations, right? And in the book of Acts, uh, it gives us the means of disciple making. Turn to Acts 1 8. And we, we all know this. This is where the Holy Spirit equips to carry out this work. Who would like to read that one? Uh, Pastor Maria? You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So he's stating that we're going to receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. So he, he taught them. He, sh he, he told them what, what the model was. He told them the magnitude of that disciple making. Right? He gave them clarity and said you need to repent, uh, uh, it's for repentance and uh, remission of sins. And then he says when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you'll receive power. Right? So that's the part of that four gospels that we were discussing. He, he, he said that we, we had to win the loss, establish the believers, equip the few workers to reproduce the process. In other words, make disciples who in turn can make disciples. Make disciples who can turn make disciples. We have to be a disciple in order to make a disciple. Everybody get that? Amen. We have to be a disciple in order to make a disciple. Right? Huh? It's a reproductive system. It's just like us as, as, as um, women, we give birth, but we don't just all of a sudden say, you know, I think I'll have a baby, and then we just give birth. You know, it takes a husband and a wife, it takes a man and a woman, right, to reproduce, come together, know each other, to reproduce. There's no other way. Okay? So, it's the same. We have to be disciples in order to make disciples, right? And just as Jesus, we are dependent upon Holy Spirit's power to achieve this disciple-making process yes. because he's the teacher. Yes, yes, yes. He's the guide. Okay? He's going to teach us the truth of God's word. Yes. And we will know the truth. And what will the truth do? Take it will set us free. free. Yes. And he who said, who the son sets free is, is free, free indeed. indeed. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. So the, the mission is clear. Right? The mission is what? To make disciples? To make disciples. That's the mission. You guys got that understanding? Yes. It's so important, right, for us to understand that mission. Each gospel account contributes a different element of the mission. But together they describe one clear goal, to make disciples in the same manner as Jesus did. Right? right? So making disciples was fundamental in Jesus' life. He was walking. <laughs> hey, follow me. He didn't ask them what kind of degree you have, you know, where you go to school, what kind of work you do. You know how it is when you meet people and they say, so what do you do? That's the first thing they want to do, like you. Don't you want to know my name? <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, so what do you do? You know, if you're a doctor, ooh, you're a doctor. Maybe, well, I, you know, I work, you know, I do laundry, I, you know, I clean. Oh. I clean houses. Right. 
And, and the reason why I say that is because, you know, that person who cleans houses is a disciple. Yes. That person who's a doctor can be a disciple too. All in the same level playing field here. Doing the same thing because right. it's the work of the Lord. Right? right? Yes. But the world looks at the doctor as greater than the person who's cleaning the home. But the person that cleaned the home is important. That work is important. Just as important, the doctor has his part, the, the worker in the home had their part too. Right. I like a clean home. I got to clean. Right. If I don't clean, it's a mess. Yes, it is. And it stinks. Yeah. I don't like stink. <laughs> so I got to clean, right? Right. So in order for us to be disciples or to make disciples, we have to first be disciples. Who's going to disciple you? Right? Christ disciples us. He sends his Holy Spirit to teach us and show us how to do that. We have our pastors. We have teachers. Yeah. We have leaders to help us along this way so that we can then do it for others, to teach them how to do it for others. Jesus is fundamental. It was a fundamental thing for him to make disciples. Amen? Amen. Pastor Maria? You wanted to say something? Um, interesting that you mentioned that um, Jesus um, disciples were called the unlearned men. Unlearned men. And mm -hmm. he's going to teach things to unlearned people. So wow. doctors, or it's, it's sometimes easier to just start from scratch than to try to unravel everything someone has learned. And I just, I'm just looking at the scriptures and just enjoying how simple God makes things for us. He does. Yes. It's not about status. It's about nope. what God is doing on the earth. Mm -hmm. so. Anybody like to share a little bit about what, what we've talked about? Anybody else? Yeah. Yes. Come I on. was thinking, I was just trying to go back to read, but the thing that sticks out is another thing that sticks out is Jesus was saying uh, in Luke 19 that he came to seek mm -hmm. and save that was that Which, which was, was lost. lost. Mm -hmm. And so I could him in the synagogue with all of the Pharisees and the Sadducees, you know, and he's like telling them what, what his mission was, why mm -hmm. he was there, and them rejecting him, because, mm -hmm. you know, they didn't fit mm -hmm. that group. But ultimately, he found people that fit the mold when he said, follow me. Follow me, and follow they did. Me. Follow me. Yep. So but there was some, there was one specifically he spoke about who um, was the rich man, I believe. The rich young ruler, right? And he said, okay. So he knew his heart. So he said, okay, take your stuff, sell it, right? Get to the poor, and then come follow me. The riches had him. Yeah. He was bound up, man. He was like, I'm not letting that go. And that's when Jesus said, it's easier for um, right, a rich man a, 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 a camel to go through the eye of the needle than a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Not that riches is, is bad. He wasn't talking about that. But the riches had him. He didn't even have riches. The riches had him. So he didn't, he wasn't able to get to be where he could put those things to the side. And so that's what Pastor Maria was saying about it's good to see people who, you know, how Jesus used those that were unlearned people to set fire to the world, right, with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And God is looking at us and saying, just because that person may be, you know, uh, uh, you know, pastor or, you know, evangelist, or whatever, everybody has their part. What is your part? What do you see, who do you see yourself emulating? It's Christ. 
do what he says that obedience is so important for us to under to 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 really grab a hold of and and walk in when we walk in obedience we're open for the holy spirit to teach us we're open to be led by the holy spirit to someone to be able to disciple or to be able to lead them to christ because ultimately that's what we are called to do right yes. we want to lead them to christ and then help to disciple them yes. right in this walk that we're in so that must become the focus of our lives and of the life of church of our churches is that disciple making leading people to christ to, and, to, and to disciple them that's what jesus jesus wanted us to do that's what the first church did and they grew quickly right because they were obedient the apostles taught they listened they were obedient and God grew the church. So it was, it's a, it's a, it's simple. God created this thing. It's, it's simple for us, but it, we make it difficult because Satan is constantly bombarding us with all of these thoughts and, oh, you can't do this. And, oh, you got to be like that one. Or, oh, you can't, you know, and, and, and the Lord is saying, just be obedient. Just listen to me. Just, just follow me and you'll see that you can do anything. Do it. You know, just do it. You know, you can do it. Right? And so that's, that's something that we have to understand what our mission is as disciple makers and to be able to take that to be able to, to uh, effectively disciple others. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You were saying self examination again mm -hmm. uh, because that's, that's where I'm at. Yeah, that's okay. It has to start with me. Um, it's the preparation that where you begin to feel uncomfortable not doing that commission, not obeying that commission. It just doesn't let you rest. And you, co and you constantly, you know, I have to obey. I'm going to have to step out. But you know, Jesus prayed for us, right, in John 17, right. and he knew. You know, he prayed for us. Let's go there. John 17, yeah. And it's important for us to, to understand some things here. Everybody's there? Lenora, I want you to read from one through five. And then I'm gonna ask Evelyn from six to nine. And then um, I'm gonna ask Amelia from 10 to 12. Ten to thirteen. And then we're gonna stop there and then we'll talk. Okay? John seventeen? Yep, one to five. Jesus spoke these words, lifted up his eyes to heaven, and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son, that your son also may glorify you, as you have given him authority over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I have glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work which you have given me to do. And now, Father, O oh Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. Mm. Okay. I have manifested your name among the I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, 
but these are in the world. And I come to you. Holy Father, keep through your name those whom you have given me, that they may be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Those whom you gave me, I have kept, and none of them is lost except the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I come to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. Amen. What are some of the key things that we saw in those scriptures? <coughs> As it was read, when he was praying for us, I'll read the first one. He said in verse 3, and this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God in Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Right? He said, I have glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work which you have given me to do. And now, O oh Father, glorify me together with yourself with the glory which I've had with you before the world was. I have manifested your name to the men whom you have given me out of the world. They were in the world. Right? He said, they were yours, but you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. So Jesus is showing that he disciple, he did exactly what God called for him to do. He, it's right here, right? He said, you gave them to me, and I, I did what I'm supposed to do with them because I do what you tell me to do. I'm obedient. We have to keep our eyes on God. Keep our eyes. How did Jesus, what did Jesus do? How can I emulate him? Well, we read it in the scriptures. He said, I did what you told me to do. I finished the work which you have given me to do. He did the work. He didn't just sit back and just, kept, you know, okay, I'm just going to hear from the Father, and then that's it. I'm not going to teach. I'm not going to show them. He, he, he did what the Father called for him to do. And he wants us to do the same because that's what he did with the disciples. Right? And he said, and they have kept your word because he's teaching. He taught them. So as we're taught, we ought to do it too. Amen? Amen. He said in verse 7, now they have known, now they have known that all things which you have given me are from you. All comes from God. Our obedience to God is so important. For I have given to them the words which you have given me, and they have received them. So they re we have to receive the word. Jesus prayed this for us. Prayed for them, but he also prayed for us too. And have known surely that I have come from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but mm. for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. He prayed for his disciples. He prayed for you. He prayed for me. He prayed for us. He said, I am not praying for those in the world because I need to raise up disciples so that they can go out and get those in the world and bring them in, just like you did, Father, with the disciples that you have given me. He said they were in the world. Right? And he said, and you gave them to me. In verse 10, he says, and all mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. He understands relationship. He understands commitment to God and the work that God has called for him to do in that verse there. He, he took that verse, he said, and all mine is yours. All of mine are yours and yours are mine. How do we see that? When we are ministering to people, when we are discipling others, are we seeing that they are God's? Are we seeing that we are his? You know, are we connecting ourselves with God and connecting them with God too and saying they you know he said all of mine is yours everything that I have is yours father everything that I have 
that I have that you have given me is yours. And everything that you give me is mine because you gave it to me. So now we have to look at this word in a, in a way and take our minds around and say, wait a minute. You know, I need to be able to understand the relationship that I have with God. He's with me and I am with him. And so I have to see them that way too. I'm not greater than them because I'm the disciple maker, right? I'm not greater than them, but I want to help them to become like to be able to say, okay, I see that relationship with God as well. So now I can take what I've learned from God, what he's given me, and now I can pour it out into someone else. Not looking to always hold things to ourselves and keep it to ourselves and it's a secret to ourselves, but always looking to be able to share the gospel of Jesus Christ, right? You know, telling me you have to repent for you, you know, for the remission of sins. Always constantly thinking, you know, God, me and God, and then others. I right? mean, Pastor was sharing that on Sunday, right? To have that relationship with God helps us to have relationship with others. And that, and it's the same here. He says, no, I, now I am no longer in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to you, Holy Father, verse 11, keep them through your name, those whom you have given me, that they may be one as we are. That connection, that oneness, that, that intimacy yeah. of, 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 you know, spirit to spirit with God, understanding the plan that he had, he has for, for, uh, that relationship with him. We have to understand that. We have to, that's why I was sharing in the beginning about us having that relationship with God and understanding who he is so that we can be the disciples that he desire before we can look to go outside and be that's effective, right? right? right. And um, he says, verse 12, while I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. He said, I kept them in your name. So here's another um, uh, example that Jesus gave us as far as his disciple making. With the disciples, he says, while he was with them, he kept them in, in God's name. He kept them there. So he taught them and he, he, he reminded them who God was and you know, who he is and, and, and his love and his, you know, what he wants to do in their lives. And, and uh, he kept that with them. We are to do the same. Right. We are to keep those who we disciple in his name. But we have to be with him. We have to spend time with him. We have to know who he is. We have to have relationship with him. We need to have intimacy with him. Yeah. We need to know his voice, right? He says in verse 12, those whom you gave me I have kept and none of them is lost except the son of perdition that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I come to you and these things I speak in the world that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I'm going to repeat that. 13. He said, but now I come to you, O Holy Father, and these things I speak in the world that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. Wow. Wow. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read a little bit more. Okay, is that okay? Yeah. Yeah. 14, I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. So what is happening here? So I have given them your word. That's what Jesus said. Not his opinion. He gave them his word. He says, I do what I see the Father do, right? Okay. He said, and the world hated them because they are not of this world. So people are not going to want to listen. Will that make you give up? No. No? 
Noah, that's right. And Jesus prayed for us. Nobody listened to him. He said it was going to rain. <laughs> they didn't listen. And that first drop happened to him. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> they knew something had happened. There was a shift. Something happened, but it was too late. God had already sealed up the door. Okay. All right. But well, here we are again. And they refuse. They refuse to listen. But that does not stop us. We continue to share the gospel. We continue to go forward. We continue to give them God's word. Those who, who will listen, will listen. And those who don't, that's not up to us. Right? We continue to go forward. How many people listen to Jesus and he showed them the miracles that he did and the raising of the dead? Did they all follow? No. no. They wanted to kill him. And then they wanted to kill Lazarus too. Yeah. Again. Yeah, yeah right? And um, he said, the world hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. He said, I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth, for your word, word is true. Your word is true. That's why when we are, are ministering the gospel, we speak God's word because his word right. is true. Right? Yes. As you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. As you have sent me, this is 18, as you have sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself that they also may be sanctified by the truth. I do not pray for these alone. Here we go. I do not pray for these alone. But also for those who will believe in me through the disciples' word. For those who will believe in me through their word that they all may be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you. That they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. And the glory which you gave me, I have given them, that they may be one just as we are one. So there he says it more than once. I in them, you in me, that they may be perfect in one, and that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. Amen. Our message is that Jesus was sent to save the lost. Amen? Amen? 24, Father, I desire that they also whom you gave me may be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which you have given me, for you love me before the foundation of the world. Hallelujah. Oh, righteous Father, the world has not known you, but I have known you, and these have known that you sent me, and I have declared to them your name, and will declare it, that the love with which you love me may be in them, and I am. Oh, good. Thank you, Father. Jesus prayed for us. He, he wants us to know who we are in him and how much the Father loves us. You know, and, and that he's given us so much. He said that they may be perfect in one as you are in me and I am in you. 
like when you when you hear this so it's a po po a poetic prayer of of love and and unity and co and commitment to relationship and intimacy you know that intertwining that that oneness you know and when we become that with him when we become where we know without a shadow of a doubt that God loves me and I love him and we are one and he's speaking to my heart and he's joining with me and I'm joining with him and we are communing together and we are coming there and I'm talking to my father and I'm having intimacy with him and he's speaking to me and we are just, we're doing this. We are doing this. I got it. I'm going to take it out. And I'm going to share that with everyone else that you place into my life. The people that have come into my sphere of influence. Because the same people that come around me aren't the same people that come around you. Every, everyone has their own that, that God brings into your path for you to minister to. But we need to see ourselves one with God and he with us. Just as Jesus says that we are, he's one with the Father. And that he made, the father made him one with us. And, you know, it's just, it's so beautiful when, when you really look and, and, you, and you meditate upon this word and you get yes. the understanding of what it means to be a disciple because that's what he was doing. He was praying for the disciples, but he was also praying for us. But he was also revealing, you know, his, you know, what he was doing. He revealed the father's plan. For, for, for him, he revealed the Father's plan for the disciples. I came to do what you told me to do. Now I'm taking it and I'm doing it with them. Now what they say is going to go to all the others, and then it's just going to keep going and going and going. And your word is just going to continue to grow. Because the Father desires all to come to repentance and not one person to perish. And that's where our hearts need to be when we are with these people that are around us in their sins, our heart is to look at them the way Christ saw us and the way he sees us and we minister to them. We don't do what they do because he took us out of the world, right? Yeah. But we minister and we, we pray for them and we lead them to Christ. Now, once you lead someone to Christ, you know, you don't just say, okay, now I want you to go to church and then the pastor is going to disciple you. <laughs> That's not how it goes. You disciple. Bring them to church, but you disciple. Okay, we're going to have a Bible study, you know, once a week or however you want to start. And you bring them to the word and show them what and, and give them the hope of what they've done and, and, and how important it is. And, and the, the repentance and the remission of yes. sins, right? And so that they can live their lives the way Christ wants us to live our lives and the way he lived his life. Share that. Share that with them. Amen? Anyone have any questions? No? Did everyone understand what we were discussing? Does everyone know what is expected of you? As a disciple, did you actually get that tonight? You did? Anyone have anything they'd like to say? Pastor Maria, you'd like to expound a little bit? What about you, Elizabeth? You good? Transformation of character. You said page? Page 12? Of the book? Of your workbook. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Application question. Mm -hmm. We are not seeking knowledge of facts, but rather transformation of character. Right. 
What do I need to obey in this passage? Amen. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's right. And when we do, when we find out who we are and where we are, then we can be what God desires for us to be, be more effective with what God wants us to be, right? So that's what this is. It, it's really going to take you on a journey. So look at it like that. It's not work per se. You know, because we love, do you love being a disciple of Christ? Do you love being a believer? Yeah. I do. I love being a believer in Jesus Christ. So it's not work for me. But, it, but you pointed out a very important thing. I'm so glad I took this class. Oh, good. Um, because I had a misconception for a while that I was going to get everything from the local church. And you, for a long period of time, think that that's where everything comes from. They're supposed to send me out. They're supposed to do this. They're supposed to do that. And I'm realizing as of late (laughs) that it's not there. You go there to fellowship, just like they said, but that you have work. It's an individual work in the Lord. And and it can be corporate, too, but it's basically you have a lot of work to do. And, And that goes with reading the word of God, obeying it, but you are supposed to go out. Now, I tried it a couple of times, and so now I'm getting more courage because I'm taking my eyes off of putting all the responsibility on the local church and the and that. And the pastors do everything and, and the so leaders. And, and, and yeah, and yeah. just looking for everybody to, like a cripple, because you're saying you're not cripple. We're Mm-mm. all supposed to do Yep. We've been called. Jesus says, as I am, so are you right. in this world. So if I'm sending you out, go. Right. Preach the gospel right. to all nations. Right. Baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Right? And he said, and I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. So he's always with us. He says, you will touch you, he said, you touch a deadly thing and it will not harm you, right? Yeah. He, he tells us that what we're able to do. We can do these things. It's not left up to just the pastors, right? And, the, right? and pastor teaches us this stuff already. Right. So this class is just, you know, we, he teaches us this, right? Pastor, Mich- pastor Maria, Pastor Jerry, they teach us this stuff. So now we're going to get to the nitty gritty, right? And so the workbook that you have is going to help you with you. It's a personal journey, okay, of who you are, what God wants for you. And you'll be able to see some things you didn't realize before about yourself, you know. And you're just like, hmm, okay. You know, so it's, it's helpful. It's going to be really, really helpful. Yes. Um, in, in Matthew, in John, and John, 17, yes, 21. Okay, that they may know that they all may be one as you, Father, are we in you, and I in thee, that they may also be one in us. The yes, us. the us, they may be one in us, and why it has a capital U. Let us make man in our in our and image together. and after our likeness I'll take you to there. So it's it's the three in one? Yes. That's the us. Okay. That's the us. That's why I asked God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy that Spirit. You. Okay. Right back again. Yeah. Let us. That's what we do. Mm-hmm. No matter Genesis one. That's right. Genesis one twenty six. It says, then God said, let us, capital U, make man in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion. 
over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. For God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Stick with that. That's what that means. But I'm glad, I'm glad you, you pointed that out because, yeah, he said that they also may be one in us. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else have any questions before we close? This is the time to ask questions. This is, we, we in class. Class is in session. <laughs> <laughs> and it's so it's important. If you have any uh, questions about... Um, your workbook or anything like that, just ask. So we're to go to 13, page 13. You can read from the beginning. Okay. Read from the beginning. Go home. Read the whole thing. Start from page 5 and keep going. Okay. And then you start your, your homework. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you can, even though we started some tonight, just wanted to kind of like go over some of it, but I want you to continue to read it. This is a this is a journey for you. It's a personal journey for you. So the workbook is for you. What I'm going to do is going over the discipleship and stuff like that. But this it's also going to help you to understand who you are as a disciple because you need to understand you before we can understand other 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 people, right? That's why this is so important, and it was very good for me. Um, to go, you know, and understand this as well, because, you know, as long as I've been, you know, in, in the word, you never stop learning, yeah. you know, you're constantly learning and something new every time. And so just be reminded that, you know, we are, uh, students and, and God is constantly, you know, teaching us by his Holy Spirit. And uh, we want to learn. We want to be intentional to learn, to hear. What are you saying? What do you want for me to do today, Lord? You know, and, and who do you want me to minister to today? Bring that person to me. What would you want me to say? How, how do you want me to say it, you know? And, um, you know, always remembering to be like Christ in, in what we do. Amen? Amen? All right. Anybody like to close us in prayer? I'll ask Pastor. Pastor, close us in prayer. Father, we thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for this course that we are embarking on. I pray that as we read the, uh, the, the challenges that we put forward to us in the text, that, Father God, that we will examine ourselves, that we will learn to receive, believe, and obey. So, Father God, we thank you for this, this, this class. We thank you for the teacher, and we thank you for the revelation and the empowerment and the, the, uh, the anointing, Father God, to do what you have asked us to do. May, may our lives forever be changed. Yes, Father. And may uh, our community be changed yes, because yes. We, are, we will be true disciples as we listen to your word and obey it. Amen. 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 God bless you guys. Thank you for coming. See you next week.